Hello, my name is Danilo Boccalini. I'm director for Translational Physiology Laboratory of São Judas Tadeu University from Brazil. Currently, hypertension affects 1 billion people worldwide and is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality, especially in the elderly and the present, a strong relationship to sedentary lifestyle. The first-line therapy to reduce impact of hypertension on health is frequently drug therapy. However, lifestyle modification has been shown as an important strategy to control hypertension. Among all known pharmacological strategies to control hypertension, aerobic exercise modality has been used the most frequently to reduce blood pressure. Although less widely used, the resistance training is becoming an important exercise modality to control blood pressure. Among the major responses to physical exercise, independent of the modality, is the post-exercise hypertension. Significant importance has been given to post-exercise hypertension due to the importance accompanying chronic adaptation and the acute responses within the cardiovascular system. Post-exercise hypertension after resistance training has been observed in normal tensive and hypertensive subjects. However, controversies still exist, especially in the reference to exercise intensity. Studies have shown a reduction in blood pressure after sessions with the use of heavy loads, while others have shown no effective response in reducing blood pressure. One reason for this divergence is due to the fact of significant methodological variations related to volume, intensity, and recovery interval used. Further, exercise intensity in training of hypertensive older people has been little studied. Low intensity training has been considered efficient in reducing cardiac work and decreasing blood pressure with a consequent reduction in the risk of muscle damage. To clarify this lack of information, the objective of this study was to investigate the influence of resistive training session of the difference intensity on post-exercise hypertension in overweight older women with controlled hypertension. To answer this question, 20 hypertensive older women participated voluntarily in this study. After a maximum voluntary contraction test and determination of 40 and 80 percent experimental loads, the protocol 3 set 90 second interval set rest was performed in the single session with the following exercise. Leg press, leg extension, leg curl, chest press, and bone flexion, a bone station. Upper back row and abdominal flexion. Systolic and diastolic blood pressure were evaluated at the rest during exercise peak and after 5, 10, 15, 30, 45, and 60 minutes of exercise and compared to control session. Both experimental loads were effective in promoting park exercise hypotension compared to controls. After 30, 45, and 50, 60 minutes, respectively, at 40 and 80 percent, both procedures promote hypertension with similar systolic blood pressure, mean arterial blood pressure, and heart pressure prudent compared to control measures. No difference was found in diastolic blood pressure and heart rate measures. In summary. The data presented in this study shows that overweight older women with pharmacological controlled hypertension is a hypertensive response after participation in hair-sieve training. Further, the cardiovascular overload during producing the session will fill with recommended health and safety parameters, and this finding was independent of exercise intensity. Thank you very much.